Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on my YouTube channel. My name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy. And this week we're going to be working on my little friend here. It's a super cute little side table that has tons of detail on it. Look at how this piece opens up. It has a curved door and all the storage in here. It's a beautiful set. Look at this curvature on this front. Um, so I already did the dresser for this piece and now I get to do the matching nightstand. So I'm going to use the same finishes, but this has unique details all of its own. So we're going to go ahead and dress this one up to match the matching dresser. You guys can find that video already on my channel. Um, I'll link it in the description as well, but this is a really cute piece. Um, there's a million different directions I could have gone with this one. I actually really liked the veneer. It's got a really pretty veneer pattern. Can you see the chevron detail that's in there? I would have loved to leave some of this wood exposed, but these are a custom order that are going home to a customer. Um, she's got a really pretty metallic bed frame that we're using as our inspiration, and this one's going to be to match. So we're really going to play up the class and elegance of this piece. Um, wait till you see it when it's finished. So um, I hope you guys enjoy. Click that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started. I need to start off by sanding this piece. The top on this one actually had quite a bit of damage to it. There's a lot of chipping and stuff around the edges and I wanna make sure I've got a nice smooth surface before I start my painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a sanding. The other thing I wanna do is make sure I scuff this body up. It's got a fairly glossy finish on it. So I'm gonna be using my Surf Prep sander. I did get out my five inch random orbital and that's because I've got my three by four in the house that I'm using on another project. So this'll do just fine. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down um, on the top and give this body a good scuffing. With my hardware off, I want to make sure I give this piece a really good cleaning. I'm going to use my Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner that I mixed into a spray bottle, spray my piece down, and then I'm going to go ahead and wipe this one off. All right, nice and clean, but I always want to make sure I rinse any cleaning residue using some water. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this one another wipe down with some water. All right, let's talk a little bit about what I plan to prime this piece with. I did go ahead and give it that scuff sanding so it doesn't have a gloss on the finish anymore, but I do plan on using white with this one. And so I'm gonna prime it using Dixie Belle Boss. And I chose Boss in white because it's gonna give me a base of white. Now, before you use Boss, anytime before you use it, you wanna make sure you stir it up really well. It can have some that settles to the bottom of the container and they can get pretty big. So I use kind of a chopping motion to get those smaller and then stir that all in until I don't feel any of that on the bottom of my container. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this really thoroughly. All right, this has been stirred really well. Any of those big globs, I just kind of take them and I smash them against the side of the container. And that kind of works out any of those big chunks. So I feel good about where this is right now. And I'm going to go ahead and lay on a coat of boss onto my piece. I'm going to do that using my Dixie Belle Mini. And this will go on just like a paint. My first coat of boss is just about dry on this piece, but I wanted to show you something that's coming through, and that is this spot right here. And I'm not sure if you can quite tell on camera, but there is definitely a yellow spot right here. So uh, boss is a stain and odor blocking primer, and had I not used that primer on here, this yellow spot would have appeared in my paint. So the boss is gonna create a barrier over this wood, even though it was a really light blonde colored wood. Um, I know by this that it would have been a bleeder anyways. So um, you always want to prime underneath your whites to prevent those stains from popping through on your paint. This is just my first coat of boss, so I can go ahead and put a second coat on this, and it's going to go ahead and stop that from coming through my paint anymore. So I'm going to get a second coat on this, get rid of this yellowing, bleed through, problem solved. Since I used Would You Bend moldings on the dresser for this piece, I of course want to use them on the nightstand to make these two pieces tie together. I chose this molding here, which is different from the dresser because I felt like the proportions of it really complemented the proportions of this nightstand. 
For the dresser, because I was doing multiple pieces and they were fairly large, I went ahead and used my cooking griddle to heat my wood you bend. In this case, I'm just going to use my heat gun because I'm only doing the one piece. I give it a nice good heating and you can see the amount of flex it adds to this piece of wood you bend. I spread a thin layer of tight bond quick and thick adhesive over the back side of my molding, making sure that I get even coverage on all of the edges. And then I went ahead and measured out center on my door to make sure I had my spacing proper. Once I've got my molding where I want it, I give it another heating with my heat gun, making sure that I don't leave it in one place too long so I don't bubble my paint. And then I'm just gonna seat it for a final seating into my piece. This just gets rid of any small gaps that might exist between my molding and the furniture piece itself. Then I wanna clean up any glue that may have pushed out around the edges of my molding. I just use an inexpensive old paintbrush and then a wet wipe to get around the edges. The paintbrush allows me to get in to all the deep crevices of the molding that I can't get with the wet wipe. So here it is. Look around the edges of this molding and see how well it's seated to the furniture piece. When I paint this, it's going to look like an original detail of this nightstand. Speaking of paint, let's go ahead and add some paint to this piece. I'm gonna start out with a coat of French linen just going over the tops of all of my moldings. French linen is actually gonna be a base color for my metallics. I'm using metallic on this piece and because they have less pigments than the flat paint, I wanna make sure I give them a base coat of a similar color in the flat paint for coverage. My body color on this piece is Dixie Belle Fluff, which is a nice rich white that gets great coverage. Over the top of my white boss, it covered this piece really well. And then I'm gonna blend out this French linen into that fluff. I want the French linen to form sort of a halo around all of the moldings on this piece. It's really gonna emphasize them. <laughs> Here is my nightstand with my base coat of paint on. It's pretty, right? But it's not done yet. For my next coat, I'm gonna replace the French linen and this time I'm gonna go over the top of it using Steel Magnolia, which is a moonshine metallic from Dixie Belle. You can most definitely blend the metallics into your flat paint. It actually works really well and it's gonna give a slight metallic glow to these moldings and then it will blend into the white fluff around the edges. This is a basic repeat of my first coat, only I've replaced that French linen with my metallic and I'm going to go around. I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini to lay on my paint and then I use my Dixie Belle Oval Medium to blend the two colors together. A two color blend is a really nice place to start, especially if you struggle with blending. This is a pretty simple look that you can achieve. 
I keep my Dixie Belle oval medium nice and dry and I use that as my blending brush. So I just come and I'm gonna swirl those two colors together anywhere they meet up. As this blending brush starts to pick up any paint, I'm gonna use a rag to lay it off and try to keep this brush as clean and dry as I possibly can. If it starts getting too muddy, I can go ahead and grab a new oval medium and that will replace it as my nice clean dry brush. The sides also get a nice light blend. I just added a little bit of my steel magnolia along the top and the bottom, and then I'm gonna blend that into my fluff. I wanted to dress up the inside door of this piece because this little caddy is so special and I love the curvature of it. I'm gonna do that using the lace transfer from Dixie Belle. The light gray and the damask pattern of this transfer really complements the soft romantic feel I'm going for on this piece. The lace transfer has a lot of small intricate details and so the key to laying this transfer on really easily is to pick up the clear backing sheet as you're rubbing it on. That's gonna introduce air in between the transfer and the backing sheet and it's gonna encourage it to seat onto your piece. Now for the details on the outside. I did go ahead and add a coat of satin clear coat over the body of this. That's just gonna protect my paint finish while I add some details over it. The first thing I wanna do is put some dark glaze onto some of the details. So this is Dixie Belle black glaze that I've tinted with a little bit of coffee bean paint. And I do that to get this nice antique brown color. I'm gonna brush it into the details, wipe it back with a dry rag, and then clean it up with a wet wipe. This piece is so ornate and I really wanna set off some of these carvings using Dixie Belle gold gilding wax. This is gonna give a soft metallic glow to some of these moldings that's really gonna make them stand out. I also did the same black glaze on top of the wood you bend and the natural moldings that are already on this piece. But I wanna go ahead and outline some of this pinstripe detail using Dixie Belle Grunge Gray Wax. The grunge gray is just gonna darken it up ever so slightly so it emphasizes that soft halo that I created with my paint. You can see how much dimension it adds using the dark glaze in the low points on my moldings and then I use that gold gilding wax on the high points plus my paint finish adds a lot of depth and dimension. It is staging day on this little nightstand. It's really been a fun piece to work on. I love this size of it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how I have it set up. So I wanted it to be reminiscent of the larger dresser that was also staged similarly. So I pulled out the same gold frames that I used on the dresser, the single white flower up here at the top, only I chose to add a pop of color on this one with the pink flowers. And that's because it's such a small piece it could use that little bit of an accent. So when I step back on my photos, this is kind of where it's gonna look like. This is a little bit larger view. Um, I kept all my staging items down low because this is a nice low piece and I think it brings out the little bit of gold in it, just very simple and that tiny pop of color. Mm -hmm. 